There are so many fun and exciting things you can do to support bone health, no matter what stage of life that you're in. One of the first ones I always think about is vitamin D3 and K2, huge for bone health, and you need them both, right? Because what happens is D3 is gonna really increase your absorption of dietary calcium, which is very different than supplemental calcium, by the way, you really, dietary is what's important, the supplemental stuff, it's not so, it's not so great. Uh, so the D3 increases the absorption of the calcium, and then K2 takes that calcium and tells it where to go, which is into the bones, because you don't want it going other places. Like you don't want that calcium finding its way to your arteries, for example. It's not the good place. So D3, K2 together, uh, and you can get these supplementarily. Um, we have a video about the various dietary sources of K2, if you want to dive deeper into that. Um, difficult on a vegan diet, by the way. Uh, and then, you know, D3, nothing's better than the sun. If you can, uh, you know, crank open the, the D Minder app, get out in the sun and know exactly how much vitamin D you're making for the time you spend out there, it, it, it really, <laughs> it's a fun way to kind of gamify it. And, and it's cool to know how much you're making and where you're at in terms of your vitamin D levels. And then in another direction, uh, weight bearing exercise, whether it's building muscle, building bones, these activities metabolically for your body use a lot of resources. And so your body's not gonna do it any more than it thinks it needs to. That's why if you're working out, your body's saying, okay, we live in a world that requires lots of physical activity and we're strength and or, or, and or endurance and what, you know, and agility, et cetera, is important. So we are going to invest a lot of our resources in building these muscles. Same with the bones. If your bones are never challenged, if you're not carrying heavy things, your body's gonna say, look, we have a limited set of resources. We can use these for various things. Is it really important to use them for bones? No, because our, you know, our person doesn't really take on much challenge in terms of uh, carrying stuff around, so let's use it for something else. Um, or on the other hand, if you are you know, lifting lots of weights, carrying heavy things, uh, being very physically active, your body's gonna say, whoa, this guy or girl is really moving and doing some stuff. We need to invest resources in these bones because if we don't, there could be a break that could, you know, lead to the end of life and that's, that's it. Uh, so showing your body through your actions that having strong bones is important to you. And then protein consumption generally, uh, you know, so many people, don't get enough protein or, or a wide enough variety of amino acids or a complete set of amino acids in the right balance. So this can be a problem as well because half of bone structure is made up of proteins. Uh, and then mineral-wise, magnesium is huge. So go for great dietary sources of magnesium, but you probably want to play it on the safe side and take some supplementarily as well, either in the form of uh, magnesium glycinate or um, magnesium l 3 8 if you want to go for some more of the, the brain health benefits of that form of magnesium as well, because it can cross the blood-brain barrier, which you don't see with other magnesium. Uh, if you like drinking tea, there's horsetail and nettle tea, which is a great source of silica, which is another um, trace mineral that's going to be very important for the bones. And then if we look at herbs, um, two that are interesting here are astragalus and eucomia. And these have not been human studied for, for bone density, uh, but they have shown great promise in animal studies. So if, if you're you know inclined to get on some great adaptogens, those would be two really interesting ones. Uh, going to a different part of the world, we can look at sea vegetables. What's coming from the ocean that can be really helpful for us here? And that is sea vegetables. These are things like uh, kelp, wakame, nori, uh, bladderwrack, hijiki, um, so many different ones. And you know, that's just like Google Lipid. That's a trippy name, isn't it? Uh, and so these are these plants that grow in the ocean uh, or algae and they're amazing. And they are great sources of lots of minerals because where do you find all known minerals? In ocean water. And so a plant or an algae or you know whatever you may be consuming can only have in it as many minerals are existing. So if you have a, a plant growing in, in, you know, poor soil, it's not gonna have so many minerals. You grow something in the ocean, it's gonna have a lot of minerals in it. And 
so um, the other thing you want to think about, you know, this is connected to the ocean as well in terms of the omega-3s, is that osteoporosis is very commonly tied to chronic inflammation being an issue as well. So omega-3s, uh, either coming from fish oil, krill oil, algae oil, these long chain omega-3s, are going to have a good anti-inflammatory effect over the course of life. And other things that you do in the anti-inflammatory department, whether it's um, turmeric, mariva, uh, whether you're doing molecular hydrogen, these things are certainly going to help in the long run and not, you know, living a lifestyle and having a diet that's going to be super inflammatory. As we were talking about the sea vegetables, I also want to connect that because those are great uh, sources of food sources of iron, uh, sorry, not iron, of uh, iodine. And so these connect to the thyroid and having a healthy thyroid is very important because thyroid hormones play a role in the balance of mineralization of the bones and bone density. Whether your thyroid is overactive or underactive, these can both actually be associated with reduced bone density. And that's not the only hormone that's important. Estrogen is another one. If your estrogen becomes too low, uh, estrogen deficiency uh, is going to induce bone loss. And so many women don't have their, you know, period for a long period of time. And the longer a woman goes without a period, bone loss happens more and more and more. You learn, you lose a certain percentage of bone density every year that you're going uh, without a cycle, whether you're in that state because maybe you've been under extreme stress or trauma or you just don't have enough body fat going on, other things that can be causing it, just whatever level of hormone imbalance may be the case, that's really something to prioritize in your life. And if that's the case, you know, please put that in the Q&A. If you're dealing with something like this, uh, it's one of my most passionate topics to discuss. Uh, so I would, I would love any excuse to go down that rabbit hole. Okay. I hope some of these things have been helpful for you. And you know, before we finish, I just want to end on the side of things not to do, of course, avoid too much alcohol, avoid too much sugar, uh, excess caffeine, smoking, not friends of bone density, but there's so many fun and exciting, at least to me, things that you can do on the positive side to make really strong, healthy bones. Mm -hmm.